Hello, I'm Michael Redmond, professional Nindong Go player. In this video, I'm going to show you the third game of the Chinese Mingyuan title match. Miyuting is white, and he's defending his title. Uh, KJ has the black stones. He's the challenger. So this is a similar opening to the uh, first game of this title match. Only this stone in the first game, it was a star point at Q4. So there's that one difference. In that game, uh, Miyu Ting invaded at R17. And he played the Miyu Ting Joseki, which in the West is called the Flying Daggers. It's a Joseki, which is supposed to be Miyu Ting's specialty. And I think that KJ was sort of you might say it was setting a trap. He had a plan for that move, which eventually worked out fairly well for KJ. So um, in the first game, he gained an advantage in the continuation of the fight in the top right corner. So I found it sort of interesting that uh, Miu Ting avoided that in this case. So he played this one. Uh, an approach move is also looks like a reasonable move. Yes, so Black played a two-space jump. Uh, this is the move that I see played a lot in this Joseki. In old times, we used to play a knight's move, maybe something like this, or sometimes a one-space jump. So this was the more popular move when we uh, played this Joseki a few decades ago. And this move is more like the AI opening. Um, it does leave a lot of weakness at the R17 point and so forth. Uh, a bit of a weaker connection for black also, but uh, maybe it's a more efficient move. It's the modern style. Okay, so here black played away once. The local move would probably be an attachment on the top here. So in this case, white would have a choice of playing here and black playing here, or white could maybe bump against at L17. I'll show that in a different variation. So black played here. Um, and plays a shoulder hit. So he's trying to build an area in the lower right, centered on the lower right corner, and this is where white attacked black here. So again, black could have played here, and so if white, so like I showed you this variation, where it's going to be something like this, where black is going to take away the 3-3 three, three invasion, and try to attack these two white stones. So it's going to be a running fight with the black group on the top side and the white group on the in the upper right, running out towards the center. So there could be that kind of a fight. Um, and with this move, I'll show you the other variation where white bumps against. So this would be a way for white to protect the group on the right and keep things relatively calm. Um, black would probably reduce white's area with this. So. Uh, Black's object, the theme for Black's play here would be sort of to reduce the potential from White's wall on the D-line. So keeping White's stones low on the third line and gain, gaining some influence towards the center. So this is something that Black could actually, he could have played this way. Attaching at one is the shape move in this case. In the game, they uh, Black played here and they got into this Joseki. So this is a Joseki which we've seen a lot of. It's another AI type of move. Black has a choice of the honey underneath or the honey on top. So just to show you a variation for that, this is where black has to capture it R6 or, yeah, well, or he can play here sometimes. But let's do the capture at R6. And in this case, again, um, black would switch to the top side because the bottom side, um, P2 is a big move. Uh, but the bottom side in general is not such a big area. So in this case, black will probably play away. P2, black P2, P2 would finish the local Joseki. But maybe he's not going to play it immediately in this game. Okay, so black played a honey underneath. And uh, the ladder has to do with this, obviously. So if black plays something like this, then white would just capture the ladder. And that's not good for black. So black in the game, he played an Atari here, which is obviously um, protecting against that. So it's stopping white from capturing the ladder. 
Black's other option was to push here. So this would actually stop the ladder and be threatening a white stone. White can't really accomplish too much here. Maybe something like this. So in this case, the 3-3 three -three invasion would be, it would be a good time to do that. Something like this, maybe. And so white, black would not be getting so much side territory. And white 4 and 6, they would be dominating the center to a certain degree. So this would be a fairly, I guess it's about even, an even result. Instead, black played here. And white gets to capture the one stone. So in this case, black gets a strong position on the outside, capturing the two white stones. But that white position on the on the right side, it's it's a good position. It's a more or less a living shape. And black's territory in the corner, uh, white's going to end up having a, an end game move here. So it's not so big. So it's an even result. White uh, got sente. So white slided here to reduce the bottom side, and black jumped out. So again, uh, it was an option to play this move. This, this way, I guess, something like this might, might have happened even now at this point in the game. Ben said he just jumped out, and he played here. And white connected underneath. So M18 is a tesuji that connects the white groups. We're going to see that in play. So I'll just move forward. Okay. So this is depending the corner. Well, for instance, um, if white played away, black would have this. White would probably answer like this to stop black from connecting underneath. Um, it would be sort of dangerous to play a move like this and allow black to cut. Although this is a complicated variation also. Um, maybe white's going to play here, something like that. So black does have a little Aji in the corner, and white's move here is taking, getting rid of it. So it's a solid way for white to play. Uh, so white f4, this has defended the corner, so black cannot live in the corner now. And black plays here, so yes. Actually, um... Katoko was suggesting L18 instead of the honey on this side. And so I think the idea is that basically it's usually better for black to play a ponuki instead of connecting like he did in the game. So if we assume a ponuki, um, it's the direction of these two white stones. So th this one is a solid connection here. And this one is uh, a diagonal connection. So in this case, uh, black will continue by connecting underneath. And later on, he will have a forcing move here, which will allow black to do stuff like this. But this is not such an important part of the board. So when we compare it to playing a honey on the other side, and playing the nuki instead, uh, now black has a forcing move here which has some use, because in this case, black can use it to sort of slide into the the area that white potentially has on the left part of the center. And so it's a more useful move than it was in that other variation, where black is sort of heading to ro towards basically nowhere, so finished area, the right side of the board, while this is a uh, area that has potential. So that's the difference there. It means that black should have played um, the, not this one, but the honey on this side to, to get to get that variation. Let's see, I'm using the wrong tool here. Uh, the honey on this side to get this variation. So so as to have L15 next. So it's a very subtle difference, but assuming that black is going to play a Nuki at M19, and instead of connecting, um, this is the direction that black wants white white's wall to be facing with a weakness at this point. So that's a fine difference, but it's... Uh, I, I got it when Katago showed me that very easily. So that's basically what I'm talking about. So in the game, he played a Hanae from the, arguably the wrong side. But um, Black's game plan, KJ's plan here, was to connect anyway. So in, in this case, he wanted to connect and sort of crawl into the white territory on the left. So locally, actually, this is more territory for Black. Um, but it's a, a solid position for white also. And actually, the fact that this area is 
open on the side at H18. So it's not uh, an area for white yet. It actually reduces the responsibility white has to surround that area because it's halfway gone anyway. Allows white to play this variation. So what white's trying to do is white's trying to play here and here and close off, oh sorry, close off the left side like this. And in the case that black does something like this, um, the, the area on the top side of the board here, this area is degraded by the fact that black gets to capture at five. And so it's less territory, but it doesn't matter because that side was open anyway. So the fact that this territory was already degraded makes the potential loss of giving black five relatively small. So that's why this variation would be working for white. Black played an interesting move here. He played this way, um, which is usually just bad. But in this case, it's okay for black because the extension here is working well, not only with the black group in the upper left, but it's working well with black group on the in the lower left. Yes. So yeah, sometimes I have trouble with the directions. But yeah, so white extended here. It's sort of a ladder breaking move, although those two stones are actually their net for the time being. But it just changes the the safety. So white's thinking of, of later on playing here, which would sort of be a forcing move. So we're gonna see that play out. So black plays here, this is a big move. The same point, the Hanetsugi there would have been a big move for white. And white plays here. So this is threatening to play at this point next and save the two stones. So black peeps once. And now the two stones, they're a, they're a net again. So if white escape, if white escapes next, let's see, where did black play? Okay, so if white plays here, um, it's a net when black plays here. So white played here. And again, white's threatening to save the two stones. So if white plays here, white's gonna be able to escape. So this is, it's big. Saving those two stones is really big. So black played here, and this captured the two stones. So now it's a kind of a little ladder here. And white got some profit towards the corner. So black is starting to focus on the center of the board here. Yeah, so this, uh, they started something on the right side, which sort of complicates my explanation. But uh, I have the feeling that black is sort of starting to focus on building in the center of the board in this variation. And the game white pushed out. And this is sort of allowing black to cut white off here. He didn't do it yet. But if black plays here, this is going to cut off the white group on the side. Maybe something like this. And white is alive. So it's not as if the white group is going to die. Yeah, so black played here. And yeah, this is the way they play the center again with a wide open center like this and no groups that are clearly in danger. It's really difficult to find a good sequence in the center of the board. Like, um, I think white could have played here. White doesn't really want to play. I, I got the feeling that this might be kind of a dumb area. It might be better to play here. Um, but it's actually very subtle differences. It's hard to say. So white played here. Uh, black could have pushed through and captured this, this stone. Um, but white's probably going to start pushing black around in the center of the board. So that would have been a game. Instead, black placed this big move in the corner and white got two moves here. So it's interesting how this is sort of playing out. Black seems to have a small advantage at this point. Okay, so if white plays here, This is actually going to be a call. So white did have a call there. Um, I guess it's a uh, white didn't have enough call threats for that one. 
Black does have seem to have some cool threats threatening to kill this group. So like combination of a stone here and here would kill the white group. So maybe that coal was not a good idea for white. So yes, this is going to be a co if white plays here also. So white white didn't play that co either. And white just extended here. So black is still trying to attack this white group. Locally, it's um, it can live. So like if white plays here and here, and white has a forcing move here. So white can make two eyes, but it's... Uh, to doing this immediately is just a little bit painful. So instead, yeah, okay. So let's see. White played here. So White's trying to build the center while saving this group, trying to be really efficient about it. And White played here. Yeah, so this is really tricky. Uh, but this is where Black went wrong. So in the game, Black played here and White cut here. Um, if black pushes through, this is a forcing move. And if black captures here, white just captures here. So what is black going to do? Maybe black's going to play here and fight the co. And yes. So it ends up being this fight, which is still a bit complicated. Um, so if black plays a defensive move here, white can play here, threatening to cap to, well, I'm not sure about that. Maybe white's, yeah, white's, white can play here and saving these would be, this would be bad for black probably. Or if black plays here, white gets a forcing move here and has a living shape. So, again, in this variation, now white's probably going to cut here. And it's the same deal. So if black plays here, white can cut here. And this looks like trouble for black. So again, it's the, the fact that black's group in the corner, the group on the right here, is in a bit of danger. It sets up this cut here. So it's a bit complicated. Killing this white group is, is not so easy. That's the, the bottom line. So black's already in a bit of trouble. And so back to this point, he should have played here to defend the cutting point. And white would play here. And yes, something like this might happen where black would be forced to defend at 11. But um, since black is connected here, black is threatening to kill white's group on the on the side. So if black gets to cut here, now white would not have, um, well, even if we say black connects here, white has no way to make two eyes here. It's just the potential one eye. In fact, yeah, it's, it's just hopeless. So this would capture white's group on the right. White has to connect here. Black gets to extend here. Uh, a complicated fight in the center. So, um, like there's potential forcing moves against White's group on the top. This would be really difficult, but it looks like maybe Black can escape out. Um, uh, I'm sort of afraid to play even one move. It's, it's really hard to choose the next move for Black. Black's going to try to erase White's potential territory in the center of the board anyway. So that would be Black's idea. So that's what black had to do. Playing here and allowing white to cut, this was a decisive mistake. So um, turns out white captured the black group on the right and black's ponuki is in the center of the board. At this stage of the game, a ponuki is not as big as it would be early in the game. So um, actually this ponuki here, although it's a real ponuki, the two of them sort of cancel each other out. So it's just the, I, I, I just say it's this one ponuki that counts. And it does um, execute a lot of influence towards the center of the board. 
but um, not enough to make up for the territory, the real profit that White got on the right side. So this is where White took a small lead. Um, again, White is the title holder, Miyu Ting, and Black is KJ 9P. And this is the third game of a three-game three match. So it's the decisive game. Um, and after this, looks like White is winning. So the fight on the right here, which just ended, it was the, the, the decisive fight. So White sacrificed a few stones in the center, but White is getting some territory on the top part of the center in return. So the top side now. Right, so they're just playing an end game now. And let's just continue this. They took it to the end of the game in this case. So it's a close game, but White's going to win by a few points. Oh, well, actually, they didn't take it to the end. It's going to be a resignation. So at this point, Black did resign. And uh, Mi Yuting won the third game to keep his title. So he's uh, taken the Ming Nang again. And that's it for this title match. So thank you for watching. Um, I, this game was fairly closely fought. I'd say it was close throughout the game. Although I think Black had a slight advantage most of the time, it was a very close game. Um, and White finally won by capturing the Black group on the right side. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, like the, the like if, if you liked it. And... Uh, Subscribe to my channel. Thank you.